Shalom. Kahala Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Hakadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well, who taught me this truth. No respect and salutations to the fellow Akim, the house of David, the hopefully lack peace to the fervent brothers on fire pushing this truth. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Barak, a thumb to you, Akim, as well as the Aqwa that are listening and learning. <clears throat> this is your brother Yahweh Sop on the Birmingham branch coming to you again with this 100% dodging. And yeah, uh, the spirit working so, you know, beautifully as it always do, you know, every day, 24 hours, all right, 24 hours in a day, every day, right? And uh, pretty much got up, <clears throat> listened to the lesson that Elder Apostle Ramlob did uh, the first day of the rest of your life until, and uh, not knowing that I, you know, I've already had a lesson, you know, queued up through the spirit. And um, this lesson is going to be entitled <clears throat> Psychological Effect of Rod of Iron. Again, the psychological effect of the rod of iron. Now, we already have a psychological effect on when we get pulled over by the cops, uh, you know, certain instances living in Babylon the Great, where you have a fear, you know, about yourself, a fear about your life. Well, this is what's going to take place and taking place amongst the Edomites and the heathen. They're going to have a psychological effect when they see one of those 144 men coming in their area with a rod of iron. Because it's only mentioned... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, about four times in the, in the scriptures about the rod of iron, that phrase, right? But it tells you what we're going to do with that rod of iron. Lord will, we endure it to the end. So we're going to get into this lesson, Lord willing to be edifying and comforting. Let's start off with the definition, psychological. Psychological. It says, of affecting or arising in the mind. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, you know, when you see those blue blue and red lights behind you, something arises in your mind, especially these times, you know, whether you'll make it, whether you can, uh, you know, be uh, agree quickly with your adversaries or not, you know, it's something that arises in your mind. It says related to mental and emotional state of person, you see, of an ailment or problem having a mental rather than physical Cause so before Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah break through those clouds, you're gonna have a mental <clears throat> breakdown. All right, because the scriptures again tells you the use of that rod of iron. All right, first and foremost, let's start off in the book of Saint John, chapter fourteen and verse twelve, and it reads, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me." The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, this is what Yahweh Shah is telling us. All right, these are his words. And we're going to get that word work. All right. <clears throat> Strong's G, 2041. Ergon. Ergon. Okay, so we see business, you know, we're about our father's business. Those of us that are continuing to push the, this testimony, right? It says employment, that which anyone is occupied. So Yahweh Hashem Yahweh has chosen, all right, certain individuals. All right, we know how we have been called. All right, Lord willing, we are <clears throat> continue to do so, continue to preach this ministry to be chosen. All right, so we already can scratch being called to this ministry off the list. The next phase and the next step to be praying and thinking on is to be chosen. All right. It says that which one undertakes to do, enterprise undertaking, all right, preaching is truth, a product of whatever, a product, whatever, <clears throat> any product, whatever, anything accomplished by hand, art, industry, or mind, an act, deed, thing done, an idea of working and emphasized and up 
to that which is less than work. So mainly miracles, man. All right. And this lesson is going to be entitled again, Psychological Effect of the Rod of Iron. When these devils read this and they know, all right, they understand, especially these high scholar Edomites, they know uh, that it's no repentance for them. All right. But what do they do? They continue on. All right. And they don't let the left hand know what their right hand is doing. Mean they don't tell the congregation. They don't tell their own people what's going to take place. It's going to fall upon their own head. Watch what I tell you. This is Psalms chapter 21 and verse 8. It says, Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. And through the scriptures, all right, through the knowledge and wisdom, we have that stability to understand these things. That's mercy in itself, being behind enemy lines. The Lord has revealed unto us who our what enemies are. All right, through his servants, through the ministry. All right, starting with the apostles and the elders. Again, thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. So those that hate us. All right, those that uh, it's looking weird, you know, <clears throat> towards us. Those that talk shit about us. They hate us. So what's going to take place? When you howl by Shem Yahweh Shai crack those clouds, man. He's coming with omnipotent power, man. All right? And he's going to bestow that on <coughs> his servants, his prophets, the elect. Right? This is Daniel 2 and 44. And it reads, And in the days of these kings, which we're in right now, shall the Most High of Heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces. Uh-oh. How are we going to do that? With that rod of iron. And consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. You got to really have a, a visual aspect of this. When you have all power given to you by the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shai, Lord will we endure to that day that we receive those. <coughs> You don't need a, 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 a anything tangible, but you're going to have a rod of iron. Think about that. Think of what type of effect that's going to have <laughs> on, the, on the people that you're going to break into pieces, man. That's a scary thing. Hey, we didn't got our ass whipped. All right? We didn't got our ass torn apart by dogs, by animals. All right, going way back to the Roman days, the gladiator days, you know? How much more with omnipotent power from the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shai, and He hands you a rod of iron. You devils are going to have to pay. I don't want to be on the other side of that, uh, that, that rod, man. <laughs> I want to be the one holding that rod. You understand? So Yahweh Shai is setting up this kingdom as we speak. Right? And we're right in the midst of you people, man. This is Revelation 2 and 26. And it reads, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Uh-oh, the works that he do. You shall also do greater, man, and greater than these. We just read in uh, St. John 14 and 12. So we have to hold that fast to that which we have. Right? It says, To him will I give power over the nations. You understand? Power, omnipotent. All right, just as Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, has given to our uh, uh, Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. Right? Let's continue. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's a scary thing. I'm popping up on your plantation, I'm popping up with a rod of iron. I can control the elements. I can control anything. I can, every, everything is given. Let's hypothetically speak on, on that note. Everything is given to us. We can move mountains if we say the word. All right? <clears throat> we can play all the instruments. We can speak all the languages. All right? But we're going to be speaking Hebrew. Nevertheless, you got a rod in your hand. All of that 
omnipotent power, all of that <clears throat> un, uh, 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 superhero strength, but you got a rod in your hand. Who's going to be afraid? Think about that. That's the psychological effect that these devils don't want to face. This is why this is not taught in the, uh, in the seminary, in the theological, in the Christians, in the Baptists, in the uh, Pentecostal, and the Presbyterian churches, man. All right? They want to tell you that the Most High is all about and geared to one emotion. That would make him unperfect. Let's read this again. And he, the ones that it what? Overcometh. All right? Keep the works to the end, those that stay on this testimony, right? He shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. So in this context here, when you take a look back, this has already happened. I'm going to say that again. When you take a context, <laughs> you know, read into context, read, in, read into perspective, understand that this last little place, uh, uh, <clears throat> saying here, even... As I received of my father. That means it's already taken place. Why? Because <clears throat> Psalms 98 come into play. Let's get that real quick. Psalms 98 and 1. <clears throat> oh, sing unto the Lord, <clears throat> Yahweh, while Yahweh shot a new song. And those are the individuals that you see today on the highways and hedges uh, doing these lessons, man. You know? And the ones that uh, follow and believe on the report, believe on the prophet's word, uh, 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 works on the word. We're singing that new song. It says, for he hath done marvelous things, his right hand, uh-oh, there go, there go that again, <laughs> and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. You understand that? You see? You understand? So it's already taking place. You know, it's already taking place. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. They shall, shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. And I will give him the morning star. See, we're looking to be illuminated. We're looking to become uh, the light bearers of the world. We're looking to be back in our rightful lot. You understand? And this is what we wait on. This is what we hasten for. You see? We're hasten to put you in a psychological effect. Just to even know, get a whiff or get a glimpse of, the king is coming. The king is coming. One of the joint heirs are coming. One of the elect is coming. You don't want to be caught in those crosshairs, man. You know? You do not want to be caught in those crosshairs, man. You understand? So, from now, <clears throat> let's go to the book of, matter of fact. Let's go there. 12. Let's see. Let's go to Psalms. I thought I wanted something in there, but nevertheless, we'll get Psalms. This is chapter 2, verse 8, and it reads, "What see, <laughs> and again, go back to Revelation uh, 2 and 27, which tells you what, even if I have received of my father, well, what, what has, has he received? Let's, let's read. Verse 8, Psalms 2 and 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. This is what you should be yearning for, all right? Not no, uh, uh, you know, 24-inch rims. Not no uh, nice apartment, you know, lakeside, beachside, all right? Not no uh, vacation uh, to the tropical islands, man, you know? We should be asking for the heathen and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Verse 9, thou shalt break them <laughs> with a rod of iron. We didn't got whips. We didn't got lashes. We didn't got dogs. We didn't got castrated. We didn't got uh, uh, gators. 
uh, our children got fed the gators. Our women got their babies cut out their body, uh, out their bellies, stumped on, dashed to pieces, uh, burnt. They kindled a fire up on our feet while we was hanging. All right, and they took uh, limbs and extremities home, you know, for souvenirs and put them in jars. This is what they did. So when they see one of us coming with that rod in our hand, it's going to fuck them up, man. Just like a police coming behind you, right? Flashing those lights. Thou shalt dash them to pieces like a potter's vessels. You see? So the Lord is righteous in his judgment. All right? He justified his elect, man. This is Isaiah 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly wasted. So it gives you that too. So it's going to have some bound down. It's going to have some resistance as well. But what are we going to do? We're going to go back to Psalms chapter 2 and verse 9. You see? We're going to rule with the rod of iron. That is a scary sight. To see a <laughs> strong, buff, so-called black man. <laughs> all right, full beard. All right. Cut up biceps. Cut up. You know. Covered in a garment. You know, baby fro. Eyes beaming. You see? You, you don't want that smoke, Esau, man. But guess what? You're going to get it. You're going to get it, man. All right, sorry to tell you, <laughs> this is the psychological effect, all right, of the rod of iron. Psalms 89, we're going to wind down. Psalms 89 and verse 23, and it reads, And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate thee. See, when he told you in Psalms 21 that he's, he's going to find out, his right hand shall find out all that hate thee, and this is what he's going to do to you. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate thee. That's a beautiful thing coming. That's, that's recompense. You see? As thou hast done to my chosen, you know, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai is going to also deliver you to mischief. So let's wrap this up in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, starting at verse 11. And it reads, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat up on it, him, was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. So through Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, righteousness, he is judging and making war when he cracked those clouds on top of that chariot. All right? And this is what you're going to look up to the east and see. You're going to see heaven open. You're going to behold a huge chariot. Pure, all power. All right? And you're going to see Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, the faithful and true one. Right? What is going to say? It says, verse 12, His eyes were as a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he. Himself, those crowns of of that is up on those uh, up on the head of Yahweh Hashem El Shai, which is symbolic. Those representing the kingdoms that he took over. If you remember uh, that that uh, scene in in three hundred, uh, where the where the Persian messenger came to Leonidas, he had his all the skulls on the side of the horse with the crowns on their head. That's just to put you in perspective. That's how you know these. These Hollywood directors read the scriptures. You see? And that's what that means. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, right hand's already gotten on the victory. Verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. That's Yahweh Shah. He comes in the volume of the book. It is written of him. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. And, and the angels they were with, uh, the, the Lord of Sabaoth, right? 
They had their chariots, clothed with fine and flying linen, white and clean, pure, pure omnipotence. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty power. Almighty God. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Yahweh himself is going to give that decree. And this is going to come in the fierceness and the wrath and his fury. Don't forget about those that pierced his side. You're going to catch a rod too. Verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So there you have it. All right. The psychological effect of the rod of iron. We're going to put you into remembrance. Lord willingness was edifying and comforting. On to the next one. Shalom.